Hey everyone, I am Lindsay Suda. I am People to People's uh, social media manager. And um, today we are talking about Full On and the Wales edition. And today I'm joined by Dan Cullen. Dan, you want to say hi? Hi everyone. And he is joining us from very afar down in New Zealand, but he is actually who you're going to be seeing on the Wales Full On program, and we will jump into what that all entails in just a few minutes. But Dan, you want to just take a minute and say, tell the audience and the folks out there what Full On's about, how long you've been with them, why you love it, all the, all the details. Cool. Well, Full On is a personal development company, so we're all about helping students reach their potential. And we like to do that by sharing some ideas. And we believe these ideas are super powerful because we want people to go out there and make the most of life. That's what we're all about. And to do that, we use um, adventure activities. For example, abseiling or rappelling off a castle is what we do in Wales. And a few other activities to help young people understand what they're capable of. And I think that's awesome because I love seeing people get it and go out there and make the most of their life. And I've been with Full On for three years, and I love it. I've worked in Wales and Italy, and we do a lot of work here in New Zealand with the New Zealand School. So I'm super passionate about the job, and I'm super excited about working with some more young people this year in North Wales. Excellent. Yeah, you mentioned that you were with Full On for about three years, and if my facts are right, I'm pretty sure people to people, we've partnered with you guys for almost 13 years, um, which says a lot, because we have a lot of uh, worldwide partners that we that we work with every year um, with our delegations, but we really love, I know we really love partnering with you guys, and one of that is that, you know, we both... Um, you know, we're doing really active things around the world, and so one of the things I wanted to talk about was what they actually will be doing in Wales. Um, you know, they spend a day with you guys there, uh, I believe on the Celtic Cultures trip, but what does that day look like for delegates, and what can they expect from you? Okay, so the group comes in, and we, can, we bring you into a nice big open hall where we do a couple of little energizing activities. We get to know you guys. We share some ideas, which are really, really interesting, and we also do a couple of activities to help cement these ideas, and they're really fun. And then we go out to this castle. It's over a 1,000 years old, and we climb to the top up the stairs, and then we rappel off the castle, which can be intimidating, but at the same time super rewarding especially when you get to the bottom. And uh, we, give, we give all the students a lot of tips and advice and help them through the whole activity. And then we come back to the room and we share a couple more ideas and sort of wrap up the day. So it's very much a, a bit of listening but also a lot of doing. And I think that's why the program is so successful is that the students get to get out there and be involved. It's not just sitting there and listening. You're out there doing your thing. It's active. You can go outdoors and it's great. Oh, and we are just joined by Charity. Charity, can you hear us? Yeah, I switched devices. Okay, well, we are live and broadcasting right now, so so welcome. Um, I just, uh, Dan was just talking about uh, the program in Wales and where they will be rappelling and upsailing uh, down from there. So thank you for joining us. Uh, Charity, are you in a place where you can you know, just introduce yourself, who you're with, people to people, and, um, and a little bit about the program? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Charity Hakes. I'm the program manager for the UK and Ireland. And um, I have worked here at People to People for a little over 10 years. And um, I manage all of the itineraries, that, like I said, that go through the UK and Ireland. Um, I personally haven't had the opportunity to repel um, at the Penryn Castle location in Wales. But personally, I think it's by far the best location for full on. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I've only seen pictures and video, too, of the whales, and it just looks so amazingly epic because from a distance, you're literally rappelling down a castle wall, which seems it's like... Totally amazing. Yeah, it seems like a very rare thing to do, but, and you know, the videos that I've seen on Full On and just, you know, on YouTube when uh, delegates get back, um, it seems just like a very thrilling activity. So... Um, Charity, do you want to uh, go into what programs actually get to do this full on with Wales really quick? Um, if you travel on the Celtic Cultures program, either in junior high or high school, then you, um, then you go to the Bangor Wales location. Same with the Traditions of Europe program, um, then you would um, visit our Wales full on site for both Celtic Cultures and Traditions of Europe. 
Excellent. Thank you. Um, and I forgot to mention earlier that anyone uh, watching live right now, if you have any questions for myself or Charity or Dan, you can always type them into the event page, and I will be monitoring that. And at the end of this kind of Q&A, we'll answer any questions that you guys have um, for any of us. So just go ahead and type them into the event page, and we'll monitor them. So next question for Dan. Um, you know, you mentioned that, yeah, there's a lot of team building and activities, but you're, we're also repelling, like we talked about. So, you know, people to people, we've traveled a lot, about 500,000 people for about, you know, decades at this point. Um, and so we're really big on safety. And we know you guys are as well. Can you just talk a little bit about um, kind of the checks and balances you guys go through to make sure that the delegates repel safely and, and have a great time? Yeah, so safety is our number one value at Full On, so we put a lot of emphasis on making sure all our activities are very safe. And obviously with repelling, um, safety is a big part of that. So all of our guides and instructors have got certain qualifications that they need to have before they can work for us, and this is they've done a specific test to show that they know all the systems in place for repelling. We also do three days of training before the season starts, so before any students come, we go to the castle and we tick off every instructor to make sure they know exactly what we're doing. We've got really high staff to student ratios, so um, we've got lots of people to deal with it, and we've also got one person that's just dedicated all day to just do checks to make sure everything's running smoothly. And rappelling is actually actually a very, very safe activity. It is because there are two ropes that the student rappels down on, so even if something went wrong, wrong with one rope, there's still another one that's backed up there, so essentially the repelling is actually really, really safe and uh, we've never had any issues at all getting students down the castle. It is safe, but however, in your mind it seems really, really challenging because obviously you're standing on top of a castle and it's quite a wee way from the ground. So the whole challenge is mental. It's in your head and that's the reason we do it because we want to show you that if you can use your power of thought, it's amazing what you can achieve. Excellent, yeah. And Charity, um, can you speak a little bit about the safety? I mean, obviously the day on full on, full on owns that along with what we're doing, but can you just speak really briefly on um, a couple of the safety measures just while the delegates are abroad in general? Well, and I, I think that I can mirror a lot of what Dan said in that people to people um, safety practices are number one. And we're, we're constantly as a team focused on um, having safe travelers and that really it goes to um, you know just the basics even um, ill students on travel or someone who might have a sprained ankle or um, or you know get um, get injured in some way shape or form maybe just goofing off getting on and off the bus we've had some sprained ankles there and and um, some broken arms and things from from students being silly or, or whatnot so things do happen and what we have is we have 24-7 coverage here at the office with um, safety managers, um, we have duty officers, I'm personally on the escalated team because I've been here for so long, so um, I'm managing and reviewing every single case that gets open on every delegate from a sore throat to hives or um, maybe someone needing to use an EpiPen. Um, so for our thousands and thousands of travelers worldwide, I know what every single student's doing at all times, and there's a team of us that are in that same role. So we're 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 looking after the safety and the and the wellness and the and the well-being of our delegates and our leaders at all times, and um, and we're very very proud of that. Um, yeah. There's um, that that's definitely a big focus for us. Yeah, definitely. I know. I know. We're one of, if not the only uh, student travel provider that has a director of safety, uh, Mike Bowers. So it's mm -hmm. it's a very um, proud thing for us, like you said. So, well, I know. I mean, you guys, both of you, um, and the whole team keeps everyone safe so they can have fun while they're on program and having full on. So, <laughs> um, question for both of you guys, and I'll start with Dan. Um, you know. And Dan, I know you've been doing um, full on for a while, and the, Wales will be your first time this year that you go to Wales. But you've been working with people to people and the delegates for a while. So, is there any particular instance or any memory that you have with people to people that kind of sticks out that really embodies the full on experience? I think the best thing for me every time I work with people to people is when we do the rappel. A lot of the time students are a bit nervous about getting, especially when they get to the top of the tower or the top of the castle, which is completely normal. 
and uh, we we sort of share some tips and share some ideas to help them get through the whole experience of rappelling. And the most amazing moment for me is always when I see their face at the bottom. It's just that whole relief, but they're just so stoked on yeah. life, and I love it. Like I just love the the insight that they get. And uh, then they talk about it afterwards, and and that what it felt like to to have this challenge in front of them, and then conquer it and get over their fears and what strategies they use. And that for me is always the best part because I know that I used to be really scared of heights, and I remember when I did things like that for the first time. It was, I guess, a big, a big learning for me, and it's something that's helped me um, conquer a lot of my fears. So it's awesome to see that in students, and I love it. So awesome, Charity, you're the, I mean, you're the travel program manager for this. You are the one who created this awesome itinerary and included full on as one of the days. And I'm sure you've heard a multitude of stories, um, you know, from from the program. But is there anything that sticks out in your mind when a kid gave you feedback about it doing um, full on in Wales? Well, I think that the biggest takeaway is the um, the self confidence and the the ability to be able to tackle tackle a fear of some sort. So not every student chooses to repel, but I will tell you that the majority of them do. Mm -hmm. But there's other ways to face that challenge: the board breaking activities and just cheering um, cheering each other on. I can tell you for myself, I am extremely fearful of heights, and the full on team came out to Spokane and let all of the people to people. accomplished that myself um, and and the staff and the the camaraderie with my fellow um, teammates here at the office uh, gave me the ability and the inner strength to be able to accomplish it and it was a skeptical it was absolutely amazing it was thrilling and even today I feel like um, I, I'm still afraid of heights and it's so funny because I would totally repel again in like a full-on um, experience because it was just the the instructors and their ability to to look at each person identify what are they really afraid of and have them focus on something else um, it was absolutely amazing. So I, I think what I love the most is the stories from the students where they come home and they, they just have this like huge, um, especially when you're a teenager, this sense of accomplishment that you, you, you face something head on and you dealt with it and, um, and there was just extreme pride in that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Charity, you, you were breaking up just a little bit. We got the gist of it, though, so I think you might be using the wireless at the office. Um, but we, we basically heard you. It was the full-on at the office. And, I am. <laughs> and countering the fears. I totally hear you. Um, so question for Dan really quick. Um, and so, you know, we were talking about the day that we spend in Wales, how the delegates are going to be spending their day and repelling and doing all sorts of activities with you guys. So for the delegates that have never been abroad and never experienced full-on, what tips can you give them to kind of help prepare, or even mentally prepare, um, for experiencing the full-on challenge in Wales? Yeah, I guess the biggest tip I can give you for traveling in general, but also for full-on, is to manage your energy. It's so easy to go on a trip like this and you just get super excited and you get into everything and you stay up really late and talk with your friends and then you get so tired that you can't, I guess, appreciate everything that's going on, especially when you get to the full-on day. You want to arrive with the energy to be able to just make the most of it. So I'd suggest like a, a bit of self-discipline around getting enough sleep mm -hmm. and I think the biggest tip for traveling but also for the full-on day is to have an open mind. Just come in and be like, okay, I'm, I'm open to, to hearing some of these ideas and trying some of these things, and I'm just going to go with it. And if you approach the day like that, I reckon you'll have, get a lot out of it. We've got a saying that goes, you only get out of life what you're prepared to put in, and we believe if you're, if you're prepared to put in 100%, you're going to get um, a lot out of it. So approach us with an open mind, and I think you'll love it. Those are great tips, yeah. And... Um it is very important to, when you're, you know, going to challenge yourself and you're abroad, um, you know, just to take go the extra distance and really, you know, take the risk and, and enjoy the experience. So those are really great tips. Thank you. Um, Charity, from a program uh, perspective, is there anything um, on the UK or the Celtic Cultures trips that anyone who's never traveled in that area during summer, any, any tips for the newbies?
If she's not paused. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> um, I love, I love what Dan. <laughs> can you hear me? Okay? Yeah. yeah um, I I would say I love what Dan said about tackling it with an open mind. Mm -hmm. um, I think that goes to the entire travel experience. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. And to be prepared for rain. I mean, in the UK, we don't stop having fun because of the rain or because it's wet. So those are my two bits of advice. Excellent. Yeah, no, and that's true. Uh, I've traveled in the UK during summer, and it can be very humid and sticky and hot and still rain. So it's always pack for pack for a little wet weather and pack in layers because you can always take them off. So, um, so one last question. Um, we're gonna wrap things up here because. We know we need to let Dan go by uh, by 10:30 New Zealand time. So, um, Dan, what can you say that this summer? What are some of the tools that the student ambassadors are going to be able to walk away with after they do full on? So, you know, they're getting to do all these you know activities and, and adventures with you guys, but what does that mean in the long run when they're back at school or when they're back li living their regular life in the states? Yeah, so I guess the whole purpose of the program is to give the students these tools to help them go back to the States mm -hmm. and be able to achieve their goals and make it happen and reach their potential. So I think it's all about attitude, and we're going to uh, provide you with some ideas that hopefully will be useful for you to create an attitude that's going to help you reach your goals. And some of it might be just a bit of self-confidence, uh, believing in yourself, and that's something that's super underrated but also your perspective, and there's a whole bunch of other things. And it's really cool because these are ideas that quite often we don't really think about, but once you actually um, give it, are aware of them and give it a bit of thought and also get the chance to test it out during the day, you'll probably find that they're super useful for you to help you go out there and achieve what you want to achieve in life. And that's why we do it. That's what it's all about. It's not about the repel. It's not about these activities. It's about what you can take from the day so you go back to the States and feel like you can go out there and achieve whatever you want in your life. And that's why we love it. So Yeah. No, that's super powerful stuff. So, I mean, not because not only are some of these students experiencing and traveling for the very first time abroad, um, but then they're also gaining these extra tools with you guys that they can take home and maybe, you know, pursue a different kind of leadership or just, you know, self-confidence that you wouldn't get anywhere else. So that's great. Thank you. Um, so, Charity, I'm going to wrap this up really quick, but anything else that you wanted to talk about for full-on in Wales? Are you you good? No, I think I think we covered it. I personally believe it's the best site. I mean, it's so <laughs> iconic to go to the UK and um, to experience castles, but what a great way to experience your program by repelling down a castle wall. It's just... Um, I think it's the highlight of one of our um, our full-on experiences. It's true. It's it's really epic. I mean, when some when someone asks you, "Oh, what did you do this summer?" you can say, <laughs> "Oh, we pulled down a castle wall in Wales." So I mean, it's it's incredible travel street cred. So, um, so thank you both, um, and thank you all for bearing with us. We had some slight technical difficulties, um, but it is the internet. So, uh, Dan, thank you so much for joining us from New Zealand. Um, I also wanted to plug that if anybody has any questions or wants to learn more about full on, um, we have them on our Facebook page and we often uh, tag them in our posts, so you can find them through us on our Facebook, or you can just Google Full On New Zealand or Full On Australia, and you can check out their website. They have great uh, videos and pictures of what you're going to do. Um, for any specific questions about Celtic cultures or any of the travel programs, you can either visit us at peopletopeople.com or find us on Facebook, and me and Charity are always available. If you post a question on Google+, Plus or Facebook, or just call us, um, we'll be there for you. So thank you both, guys both. Have a good thank day. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>